Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Bedrock Guide. We are headed down into our branch mine right now because we're going after some obsidian. We need obsidian today because we are going to build our first enchanting table to get enchantments for our tools and armor. If you don't know how to mine obsidian, you do need a diamond pickaxe. So if you have not gotten diamond tools by this point in the game, you absolutely have to have them now. Be careful though, because if you're like me, you'll probably jump in there, bring a water bucket with you so you can, you know, douse the flames that are obviously beneath this obsidian floor. But we're going to need four pieces of obsidian, and then we're also going to need two diamonds and one book to build our enchanting table. And there we go. We're not going to grab any more than we need right now because I don't want to waste too much more durability on my diamond pickaxe because we've got about 20 of them. I don't need, I don't think it's 20. I think it's more like 15. Maybe 10. I don't know. We've got a lot of pickaxes sitting in a chest right now that have next to zero durability left uh, because we've been going crazy mining. But hopefully after today, our pickaxes will last us a little bit longer than they have. But before we can get to any of that, we got some things to show off. This is a brand new addition to the house. This is a storm cellar storm door that I built. And we actually just finished up with a stream where the community helped to build this room. I took so much community feedback from anything from the, the mossy stone bricks to having some water troughs to sort out some leaking issues to having a workbench, putting our stone cutter on top of the bench, things like that, some cobwebs, all sorts of decorations in here. This is the most dingy, grungy, nasty piece of work I've ever made, and it's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, so we've actually already got some things down here. We've got our diamonds. We've got some leather. We're going to grab some of this sugar cane so we can make some paper. Then we'll go over here to our crafting table and make three pieces of paper. And we'll take our leather and three pieces of paper to make one book. And now with our obsidian, our diamonds, and our one book, we should be able to make an enchanting table just like this. Fantastic. So we've got our enchanting table and we're going to go ahead and plop it over on the ground. I think right here would be a good spot. And if we wanted to, we could go ahead and throw some things into the enchanting table and get rolling. But we're not going to get very good enchants from this. We will get very, very minimal, low level kinds of things. We want to get much better enchants than we could get with just a standard enchanting table. So in order to do that, we're going to go grab some more leather and a bunch more paper. And we're going to make a bunch of bookshelves. Uh, we need logs for that as well. Then we are going to go into our crafting table over here and we will take our planks and go here and then we'll go here and then we'll take our books and go across like this. We've got more than enough. We only need 15 bookshelves. So we'll go ahead and craft up 15 of those and then we can start placing them around our enchanting table. We've left a gap here between the walls so that we can have some separation between the bookshelf and the enchanting table. But we'll go ahead and place three across the back wall, three over here on the side. And we're going to have to break that one because we don't have Silk Touch yet. It's going to break the bookshelf. We'll go ahead and craft another one. That's not a big deal. And then three more on this side. So that would give us a total of nine. Then we can do something like this. Put three more across the back. Then we can put one here and then one here. And then we can put one here. If I were doing this in a different style room, I might add another bookshelf just for symmetry purposes, but we will get max level in chance with this setup. We've got level 30 right here. Anything less than 15 bookshelves will give you less than a 30 level enchant, which is max enchant. And you just kind of want to go for the most we can possibly get. Now, I don't really want to enchant any of these tools because they are all pretty broken and scarred and maimed. We need to get some brand new tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take several of these. I'm not going to take all of them. I'm going to leave some for a future use and we're going to take them back down into our basement where I already have an anvil set up and we'll hop over here to this anvil and we will take a pickaxe right here and a pickaxe right here and you can see that it does repair it. It costs two enchantment points and we can take that there and then we can go in and repair another one and that one costs three and then we can go in and repair it again almost up to max level and then we can go in and repair this again. Now, I wouldn't necessarily suggest doing this every time, but for the purpose of today's video, I wanted to show you that it is possible to repair tools back to full strength, even if they are at the minimal level. 
There are a number of ways that we can enchant. If we had an enchanted book, we could actually go over to our anvil and we could place a pickaxe there or any enchantable item like tools, armor, shields, bows, things like that. We could place it there and place an enchanted book, but because we don't have an enchanted book, it's not gonna do anything. There's nothing to apply. But if this was an enchanted book, we could pull the enchantments onto the item manually. So the main way that we can enchant right now is to go over to our enchanting table, and we're gonna take our diamond pickaxe and put it up here. And then we will take three lapis, just like so. Lapis is what powers this thing. And then we can hover over and see the first enchant, and that is not bad. We're gonna go for that but I want you to see Fortune 3, Unbreaking 2, Unbreaking 1. 1 XP will get you a level 5 enchant, 2 XP will get you a level 12, and 3 XP will get you a level 30. And what I mean by that is if you go ahead and grab that top enchantment that we just saw, the level 5 enchant, you have to have at least 5 levels in your experience bar in order to get that. It will only subtract one, so if you have five, it will drop you down to four. Same goes for the level 12 enchantment. You gotta have at least 12 experience levels, and it will subtract two at that level, taking you down to 10. And the same goes for the 30. You guessed it, you gotta have 30 levels, and it will take you down to 27. If you drop below any of those numbers, for example, max level enchantments go to 30. If you drop below 30, you will not be able to get that three experience cost enchantment because you don't have the necessary levels, but thankfully we've got 68 levels, so we got plenty of room to enchant now. If we go in here and we enchant this, we will lose three levels down to 65, but we will gain Fortune 3 plus some potential other enchantments. So let's see what we get out of this. That's a huge bummer. <laughs> Honestly, it's fine. Like Fortune 3 is not a bad thing to have, but because I'm not super happy with this enchantment, we can go over here to this grindstone. This is a feature that did not always exist in Minecraft. Once you enchanted your items, uh, you were kind of stuck with them. But now with the grindstone, if we're not happy with our enchantments, we can go in here and be like, yeah, no, let's take that off. And it will give us some experience points back, not a ton, but it will give us a little bit back. And we can go over and try again with our blank pickaxe and three more lapis. Fortune 2, not exactly great. So if we run into this situation now where we have enchantments that we don't really want, we don't want Fortune 2, we don't really want to settle for Efficiency 2, we definitely don't want Unbreaking 1, we can take our pickaxe off of the enchanting table and we can go in and drop a book in there. And we can see if the book offers anything better. So the book is going to offer Power 4, which would go great for an enchanted bow. So we might consider that. Efficiency 1, nope. Unbreaking 1, nope. Let's just go ahead and take it and see if there are multiple enchantments chance. So we've got power four and channeling one. So power four would be great for a bow. Channeling is okay for a trident, which we're not really going to need right now, but we'll go ahead and take that book. So then we can go in here and drop our pickaxe again. Take a look. Unbreaking three. Not bad. Let's go ahead and drop three lapis down and see if there's anything else. Hey, this is a perfect enchantment for early game. Absolutely perfect. It cannot get better than this. Silk Touch Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 4. This will be a great mining pick that we will take with us on every mining trip. The only thing that could have been better is if Silk Touch were actually Fortune 3. We want to get this identical pick again with Fortune 3 on it because I always carry two enchanted picks with me so that when we run into things like a diamond vein, we'll actually want to fortune those and we'll explain why that's important here in a moment when we talk about specifics of enchantment types. I'm gonna go ahead and craft up a brand new pickaxe because I don't really want to repair the rest of these. I want to save them for a future use when we finally get mending because honestly, while we could repair all of these, we're only gonna get maybe one or two fully repaired pickaxes out of this bunch. One thing to note as well is that your enchanted tools and armor might look slightly different than mine. I do have a texture pack that kind of reduces the glint on these tools so you can kind of see the original textures, but notice you can see it sparkling on the screen. They are enchanted. If they are unenchanted, they do not sparkle. So just keep that in mind as we're playing through this series. Yours might look a little bit different, a little bit more purple, but since we are using a texture pack, ours are going to be less so. So let's see, what do we have here? Unbreaking 3, do we want to risk it again? Let's give it a try. And... <laughs> we just got an identical pickaxe. 
Normally I would want to keep this because it's not bad to have multiples, but because we are very limited on resources to begin with right now, we're going to disenchant it and we're going to try again. That is Silk Touch. We don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and grab a book. And we'll grab some flame. That's not bad to have on a bow either. So we're going ahead and starting to build a basic bow structure here. Got Unbreaking 3 again. And again, dude, with the same exact pickaxe. This is not what we want. Three times in a row. If you get an enchantment like Fortune 2, that there is a Fortune 3 possible to get, if you happen to have a Fortune 2 pick and a Fortune 2 book, or two Fortune 2 picks, or two Fortune 2 books, you can combine the same types of enchants in the anvil. So if this was Fortune 2, and let's say this was Fortune 2, we could combine these to get Fortune 3 on our pickaxe. Just keep in mind that the more times you enchant something, the more expensive it gets, and eventually it will hit a cost that is too high to pay, and you will no longer be able to enchant that item. So I'm going to go through and enchant a bunch of things, and if we get anything interesting that we want to talk about, then I will show you as we go along. Otherwise, I will meet you on the other side. Hey, this is perfect right here. We just got our first Fortune 3 Unbreaking 3 efficiency for Enchanted Pickaxe. This is great because Fortune is exactly what you want to use to mine ores especially diamonds. If you use a standard pickaxe that does not have fortune, you will only ever get one diamond out of diamond ore. But if you use a fortune pickaxe, it has a chance to increase the amount of diamonds you get from one ore based on that fortune enchant. For example, fortune three will give a chance to multiply drops by two, three, or four times with a 20% chance each. 20% of the time, you're gonna get two diamonds or three diamonds or four diamonds, which is great to have because it will exponentially increase the amount of diamonds you get from a mining trip if you were just using a regular pickaxe. We're going to demonstrate a couple of these tools at the end of the episode. We'll go branch mining for a little bit to show you how these tools work, but stay tuned. And while we continue to enchant our items, why don't you guys go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section to let me know what some of your favorite enchantments early game are. And if you're enjoying the video, go ahead and drop a like as well, if you wouldn't mind. Looting 3 is the equivalent on a sword of having fortune on your pick or shovel or axe. Looting 3 applies to mobs. So you're going after a cow you are more likely to get more leather and beef with looting three than you are with a regular sword. So looting three is a fantastic enchantment and we are gonna take it and see what else is on this sword. Ooh, wow. That is a fantastic sword. That is not bad to start out with. So looting three, unbreaking three, fire aspect two, sharpness four. Let's talk about each of those enchants. We've already talked about looting. Unbreaking, you've seen that on a couple of my pickaxes already. Unbreaking basically increases the durability of your tools so that when you're using them, they will not break as quickly. Fire Aspect 2 will catch any mob on fire, which is pretty fantastic. We'll demonstrate that here in just a second. And Sharpness 4 will basically increase the output of your damage. There are multiple enchantments like Sharpness 4 that will actually go up to a level 5. Well, another one of those, for example, is Efficiency. Those are actually not attainable through an enchanting table. Level 5 enchantments can only be attained by applying a book that has a level 5 enchantment or by combining two level 4 enchanted tools or two level 4 enchanted books. You get the gist. Then what we can do, check this out. This is where Fire Aspect really shines. If we're going around and we're going to take a whack at a cow, just like so, just like, there we go. When he drops his beef, it is cooked. We do not have to go to a furnace. We don't have to go to a smoker. We don't have to waste time or resources on coal. It is automatically cooked for us. So we can just go around cooking, cooking steak all day long, or we can go around and cook mutton. Okay, we've got the perfect opportunity to show you how to combine a tool with an enchanted book. So what I've done is I've rolled a Fortune 2 Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 4 Shovel. That's pretty good. But we want this to be at Fortune 3 level. If you drop this book right here, not all of these enchantments will apply because some of them are not compatible. Thorns is not compatible with tools because it is an armor exclusive enchant. Infinity is a bow enchant. Multi-shot is a crossbow enchant. So the only thing that's going to apply here is the Fortune 2. So since we have a Fortune 2 here and a Fortune 2 here, that will give us a sum of a Fortune 3 
shovel. Having Fortune 3 on this shovel will be fantastic in situations where we are looking for flint. If we need flint for arrows or flint and steel, Fortune 3, while mining gravel, is going to give us so much more flint than if we were using a regular shovel. One thing that would be nice is if this were a silk tuck shovel, we could go around and mine grass. Rather than going in and mining it and turning it into dirt, we could actually just pick up grass blocks and transport them wherever we want. It also works with path blocks. This is a Bedrock Edition exclusive. You can make path blocks on both Java and Bedrock, but if you have a silk touch shovel on Bedrock, you can actually pick up the path block and then replace it anywhere you want on the ground. That does not work the same way in Java Edition. When you mine it with a silk touch shovel, it still turns it back into a dirt block. So that's kind of a cool little difference. We've got two pickaxes, one fortune, one silk touch. We've got a looting sword. We've got a smite axe. This is perfect to have opposites. Sharpness four over on the sword will deal more damage in general, and smite on the axe will actually deal more damage to undead monsters like zombies or skeletons. So that's nice to have. And then we've got fortune three, unbreaking three, efficiency four on our shovel. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep enchanting and try to get some of these efficiencies up to efficiency five. So we're looking for some efficiency four books, or if we can get another efficiency four shovel, things like that. We're going to try to bring these up to max level, but for the most part, these are complete. We also need to get a hoe before the end of the episode as well, but for the moment, I'm going to go on to my armor, and we'll talk about armor pieces here for a moment. This right here. Fire protection. I'm going to need a lot of fire protection. I've already died in lava one time, and it is bound to happen again. So, the more fire protection that I can have, the better. This is only fire protection three, but that's fine. We're going to go ahead and enchant it and see if there's anything else worthwhile on this piece of armor. Nope, that's it, but we'll keep it anyway for now. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. This is what we want right here. Feather falling is going to decrease the amount of damage taken when you fall. And speaking that I just died from fall damage on my stream, we're going to need this. Protection four and thorns two, not too bad. Thorns two will actually take some of the damage that is inflicted on you and put it back on the one that did the damaging that's not bad to have we're gonna go over here and combine our boots now with our feather falling four so that in case we do fall we're protected and look at that fire protection four on the helmet we might take it but let's see what's on the pants I'd rather have that on the pants. I'm kind of saving the helmet for something a little more special. Ooh, this one right here. This one, this one, this one. Aqua Affinity on our helmet. This is what we're looking for. It would be nice if it also had respiration on it. Aqua Affinity and respiration are exclusive to helmets. Aqua Affinity will increase the speed with which you mine underwater, which is going to be great for when we go branch mining, because when we go branch mining, oftentimes we run into underwater caves. So that will speed up our mining time. And then respiration will also increase the amount of time we can hold our breath underwater. So both of those enchantments combined make for a fantastic helmet. So we're going to try for that. We're going to see if we can get both those enchants on that helmet. Another thing that we should talk about before we finish rounding out our set of tools and armor is that there are certain enchantments that are incompatible with other enchantments. By that, I mean something like this. For example, on our boots here, we have protection four. On our pants, we have fire protection four. I cannot have fire protection four and protection four on the same piece. I can wear them both at the same time. So we've got regular protection and fire protection, but I can't put fire protection on these boots because it already has one type of protection on it. The same goes for our sword and our axe here. Sharpness is incompatible with smite. So I cannot have sharpness and smite on this axe and sharpness and smite on this sword. You have to pick one or the other. Hence the massive debate that Prowl and I always have about bows. Infinity and Mending are incompatible on bows. They didn't used to be, but they are now. Choose Infinity. If you choose Mending, you're wrong. I've got four books here that have Efficiency 4 on them, but I'm also looking at the secondary enchants as well to see which ones I am least likely to use on another tool or armor set. This one right here has Power 4 and Flame 1 on it, so I'm more likely to hold this one back. Channeling and knockback two, I don't super care about, so I will absolutely use that one. And then I'll go ahead and use this efficiency four book that's got projectile protection four on it because I've already got that on my helmet. 
and I don't really need it again, so I will go ahead and use those two books and hold these two back, just in case I need them for something else. And we'll go over to the anvil and upgrade this to efficiency 5, fantastic. And we'll upgrade this one to efficiency 5 as well. Once we have mending, these tools are unstoppable. We are nearly done, but this is probably the most important thing we are going to do today. We are going to enchant the most OP bow you can get in the game, no matter what Prowl tells you. Right here, we've got Unbreaking 3. I don't know what else is going to be on here, but it doesn't quite matter. Unbreaking 3, Infinity 1! Look at that. It's already knowing what we want to do. But we're going to go in here and let's go grab another one just in case. Okay, Unbreaking 3, Power 3. We'll save this as a backup for later, but here's where we got something real important to show you. This book right here, it looks like a giant mess of nothing. And for the most part, it is. We have on this book, Flame 1, Power 5, Infinity, but we've already got Infinity, so we don't need another one. And then on this book, we have Punch 2. If we combine all of these things right here, Infinity Unbreaking 3 with this book, boom. We've broken our anvil. See, the bow was just too much for the anvil to take. The anvil just couldn't help but break under the weight of the amazingness that is Infinity. And we'll toss that in there, and we've got the absolute best bow in the game. I can go up here into my storage room and take a look at my mob drops. We've got 23 arrows here. We're just going to take one, and you can go out here and just be like, let's fire some stuff at Prowl's house. And because we have infinity, this will never run out of arrows. It's beautiful. You never have to worry about running out when you go on your adventures, and they're relatively easy to repair or replace. Team Infinity, let's hear some shoutouts in the comment section. I mean, just check this out. Watch this. Watch this. One shot. Boom, that sheep's done. Boom, one shot. It's so easy. Why would you want anything other than this? Have I convinced you yet? If not, I don't know that there's any hope for you. In all seriousness, though, this is the best bow that I think you can get. You might disagree, and that's fine. But we've got Unbreaking 3, which we've already talked about. Flame is very similar to Fire Aspect in that it catches anything on fire with a flame arrow. It can be used to catch mobs on fire, or it can even be used to catch TNT on fire, igniting it and allowing it to explode. Infinity, we've already talked about. Basically, you only need one arrow and you will never run out. Power 5 will increase your damage output, so you can basically one-shot any enemy that's in range. And Punch 2 is similar Similar to the knockback enchantment that you'll find on swords, it will push the enemies back. All in all, great weapon. We are all done enchanting, and I do want to show you one more quick thing before we go meet up with Prowl for resource roulette. And that is for us to start another branch here. Now, you may notice straight out of the gate, the tools are so much faster. Efficiency 5 makes the whole mining process so much quicker. We can go a lot farther and gain a lot more resources in a shorter amount of time, and our tools won't take as much damage because we've got Unbreaking 3 as well. So it overall just improves the entire mining process and generally the gameplay experience. Things start moving a little bit quicker once you've got enchantments. Dude, this is what I was talking about earlier. Water streams are no longer a big deal for us. We used to have to bob up and down and swim against the tide, and now that we've got Depth Strider on our boots, oh, it's just a breeze. This right here is exactly what we are looking for. Uh, we've got a five vein. I kind of was hoping it was an eight, but that's okay. We've got five diamond ore. Now, normally I would pick these up as ore and take them back to the base before we fortune them. But for the sake of a science and demonstration, we're going to fortune these here. If we were to mine these without fortune three on our pickaxe, we would just get five diamonds. Now, when we mine these, we should get more than five. So right there, out of that ore, we got three. Not too bad. Then out of this one, we've got two more. Then out of that one, we've got three more, up to eight diamonds, up to 11 diamonds, and up to 12 diamonds. That's fantastic. Five diamond ore, and we've got 12 diamonds from it. I know we've discussed a lot of different things, and believe me, there's so much more that we could have discussed. 
and we left out because we didn't have time. Enchanting is a vast part of the Minecraft experience, and if there's something that we missed that you want to talk about, leave it in the comment section. I'm sure we will talk about it at some point over the course of the series, but there's just not enough time in one episode to cover every last aspect. So we hit the big things, and we're also not going to have a comment or question of the day today just because we are running out of time. We've got so many things that we've talked about. We will hit another comment question of the day in the very next episode. I promise we will get a consistency going with that here, but we're going to drop our things off and then go meet up with Prowl and go on to another round of resource roulette. And if you want to leave in the comments as well some things that you would like for Prowl to get for me, then let me know and we will consider that for the future. We actually have a lot of progression in the game now. We've got some more things that are opening up to us. We'll be going to the nether soon, so nether items will be of availability. And actually, Prowl's already been there, so, you know, nether things, he can get those for me now. Hint, hint, quartz would be nice to have. But anyway, let's go meet up with Prowl. For today's fan pick, we have got Obsidian. Feel like that's readily available at this point, so we're gonna be going to the nether soon. Might be nice to have a little bit of that. And might be nice to be the person not to mine it. Well, 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 who do we have here? You got the man himself, Prowl. What's up, the man himself, Prowl? How you doing? I'm doing really good. You're looking nice and shiny. You too, dude. Nice and sparkly. I like the, the pinstripes flowing up and down your, your armor there. It's very good. Very yeah. nice. Hey, look. Look what I got. Oh, is that a is that a crappy infinity bow? Yeah, let me just shoot it at your house real quick. Oh, wow. Well, it probably didn't even hey, come I close. I, th I think your roof is on fire now. <laughs> Great. All right, let's get this <laughs> let's get this show on the road. I want to see what I'm going to win from you today. Okay, so you went first last time, right? Yeah, I did. So, 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 so am I up? Do I have the honors? Hit it. Do it. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, big money. What did we got? Uh, big money. <laughs> I put it back in. This is the worst <laughs> game in the history of many games. Get a one, get a one, get a one, get a one. And... <laughs> oh, you got a one. My God. You got a one. You got Did you rig a it? one. No, there's literally no other way that I could have won that. I think you uh, did I you take so it out? Did you take it out and throw it at me? Nope. Nope. <sighs> hey, 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 guess what? What? Guess what you're going to get me? My what? my fan pick for today is obsidian. So, oh God. good luck. <laughs> Go ahead. Push the button. What do we got? What do we got? Diamonds. That's even worse. <laughs> yes. We I'll just doubled the multiplier on that, too. Yeah. Diamonds are times two now. So that means it would be times four. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, Come on, diamonds. Come please. on, diamonds. Eggs times eight. <laughs> You're kidding me. That's fine. We're, we'll make a chicken farm or something at some point. So, all right. Eggs times eight. Now, what is the multiplier on that? Eight. I owe you 64 eggs, sir. Hey, one full stack. I'm okay with that. And you know what? You better not, like, crack them or split them up like you did my iron last time. I know what you did. Yeah, it doesn't say how I have to deliver them to you. I'm just saying. <laughs> Don't crack my eggs, dude. <laughs> we'll crack them in your house, like, on the live stream. Bye! But guys, that is going to do it for today. We've got some work to do down in the mines. We've got to gear up even more because I do not want to have just one set of tools and armor. Eventually, we're going to want to have multiples. But if you enjoyed this video, please do say so in the comment section. Leave all those comments, drop all those likes, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss any more content like this. But thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.